All right, guys, what's up? This is David, AK Reverse Long. Today I have back back on the podcast, J Trader. So J Trader has been on the podcast a few times already, and we've gone over some trading strategies, some really good podcasts on like big hands that I remember and shorting on SSR, uh, some strategies, and and uh, yeah, I made some clips on them. And I personally love the clips because I get to listen to them multiple times, and yeah, it, it's great. So anyways, J Trader is back on the podcast, and I reached out to J Trader this time because I saw um, recently one of his tweets that he pinned, and it goes over his background. And like, you know, he has a lot of experience in the market since like 20 years or something like that. So like, you know, he, I was always interested to see like, you know, the, the genesis of traders is always interesting, you know, he's like what it takes to start with, you know, like a self-made success you know what i mean so like it's just um it's very inspiring and it, it's just to get the the history and the background of the person that's successful so so yeah with that jay how's it going hi david first of all thank you for what you're doing and i'm not saying only for me but also for all the traders out there because uh when i hear your podcast you share so much knowledge from different traders different backgrounds uh institutional or private traders so I can hear, I would say, multiple aspects of trading, sometimes even like interesting for me, even because this is just like something that I'm announcing over here is uh, we're moving more to an institutionalized type of trading. So actually get involved in building has fun with uh, running 50 to 100 algorithms. So this I'm just saying like that and uh, glad to be here. Oh, thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Wow. OK, so. So Jay, you want to get started? So you made that that tweet of how you started. Was it uh 1999 and 2000? Is that correct? Yeah, I wanna I wanna point out something. I mean, been talking with my, uh, I think also made like a video with my wife like uh, time ago. But the point is this: different times, uh, in the market. So I started when it was 19, and I wrote in that tweet that. It was, it seemed like so easy, but in actually, in fact, it wasn't. So the second time I started was 2016, 17, when I started small caps. Uh -huh. So all different type of market. But when I started in the Italian market and where I live over here or in Italy, everybody knows me, was going to conference. I see a lot of traders that reach me out from uh, like Redivant, Luca Riccati, Bellelli, uh, that I uh, tag on, uh, on socials because they were traders at the time that I started. So 1999, 2000, 2001. Different market, European market, uh, cover warrants, which are similar to options today, mm -hmm. uh, Italian stocks, Italian equities, and then also European equities. Market, unbelievable. I think was, that was the best market that I ever traded. Not really because that Italian market was great. We had a uh, tech bubble. Uh, 99, 2000, 2001. So we were trading Tiscali, Abyscom, ePlanet. And I mean, the Italian traders, the European trader that I met the conference those times, they will really have memories because when I tell you Tiscali, those are stocks that went up like uh, 100, sorry, 1,000%, 10,000% some. And covert warrants used to move like in a crazy way. So people became really millionaire trading those. In a day, you could make like maybe three, four, five hundred percent. We could trade with size. There was less manipulation in the beginning that you see right now, for example, in the small caps. So totally different. Yeah. And from 99 till 2002, 2003, really killed them, killed them. And I was working with several uh, banks, brokers. I became a friend of them. We started like to, you know, establish partnership during the years. And, uh, and then, you know, that market collapsed. But that was my starting when I when I started trading uh, stocks and covert warrants, got you. So that was the tech bubble. So here in the United States, I, I don't remember it because I was like in a high school or middle school. But in uh, 1999, 2000, it was a dot com mania, and that's when like yeah. stocks would put like dot com at the end and a P press release PR, and the stock would go up and then it would crash. And then um, a lot of people made money. Like I'm um, uh from my my research, okay, like 1997, 99, and then it crashed. So if you if you learned how to short sell, you can make money on on that crash. But uh, back then, short selling wasn't as popular as it is now. So was it the, was the Italian market like um 
like piggybacking off of the energy from uh, the, the what do you call it the euphoria from the United States stocks it's not all like that I remember that I was in the gym already going to the gym and there were friends who were like policemen uh, maybe like you know firemen whatever they were looking at this uh, this newspaper and they were training like this uh, uh, tech bubble first it happened in the states and then it like Every single thing that happened in the States, it reflects also in Europe. So in Italy came after. And I remember that they were making money. And I said, this guy knows nothing about trading. So I want to make money too. It was like, let's say, 17, 18. And uh, I thought it was easy, but in, in actually it was not that easy. Because the first time, my first account with Fineco, I still don't remember them. I don't know, even know if they're around. I believe, yes. I lost everything. And... Uh, Remember, I started like buying by trading library. Uh, there was also this data provider in San Marino uh, called Visual Trader, still uh, right now like active. And I started like taking the, the data feed from them only to see charts. So I was not trading, I was studying the charts. And I remember that I was seeing these stocks and it was crazy. Like I was saying, the stock was going up maybe like five, 10% in a week. And the cover warrant was going up maybe like, 2,000% in a week. I'm saying some numbers like that now. I don't remember. But I I remember that one day I I had a, an account small and about two years after my account was like 300 times more, something like that. It was simply absurd, you know, absurd. And I thought, now I found what I do in the life. And I will need nothing anymore. I have no stress. I have no like... You know, no bigger goals than this because I can make much more money than all the people going to the best universities and like my friend becoming doctors, lawyers, and I was doing much more money than them. And that's only what I what I counted, right? To make money. But then, uh, you know, like every market is stopped. When it stopped, like it stopped also the euphoria around it. So from everything pushing up, boom, sort of like to fail. So remember, I lost some money. Uh, not a big amount. It was very wise to uh, wire out and start really, uh, because it was not anymore tradable. So this, I would say, process to trade cover once was not anymore tradable by Societa General, Citibank, Saxo Bank, uh, Deutsche Bank, uh, Societa General, yeah, and Unicredit. Why was not anymore um, tradable? Because they became more illiquid. They beca became more controlled uh, we had consul in Italy that was not like the SEC right now that uh, you have to keep certain rules. Um, the, the firms really have to put out the right uh, the right prices. In Italy, they were counting volatility. Let's say a, a cover warrant needed to, to pay you 50% okay, on that day. He was maybe staying away from the book. It was a liquid for about two hours coming back. Maybe you were losing 5%. So when I saw like two months doing this and uh, I said, no, I need to protect my capital. So let's wire out, start like uh, buying, let's say some uh, funds of investments, like return a steady of four or 5%, whatever. And then started like to start learning futures. But again, over there, I was a beginner. So how could I, how could I learn? And that was a new start, you know, of my, my trading career. David, this was, I think, the worst moment in my life because I was passing from making seven figures per year to making like zero per day uh, because my, I would say, my wizard market that I was simply great, really great in it, was not anymore like able to trade it. So imagine what a kind of depression. But also it was a good time because a lot of the the people that I that it became important in my life, uh, I met them during this time, like uh, Luca Riccati, Mark Alberti, Michele Pertile, which was the director of this very important bank that I worked with between 2000 and 2001, I think, 2004, 2005. I even posted the papers a few days ago that I found them from my, my bookkeeper on, uh, on my socials because it was very funny because... It was so back in the days, like if I think about it, it's like 23 years back from now. And uh, I was making courses and everything. And then I had to start in futures. So imagine trading 
one contract. At the time I was trading really ES and NQ. And I was trading to make maybe like two points a day, three points a day, which is like seems ridiculous, you know. There was less volatility than right now. I was trading using tick charts. Uh, I was in a group uh, to trade, but, you know, it took time before I could become consistent in another market. And what, what year was this? When I passed the futures between 2003, 2004, 2006, 2007, those years were there. It took me like a couple of years before becoming consistent because I was doing Forex, which I never liked. And I think was with all those meta traders platforms, <laughs> I think was uh, not the best market for me. I was not able to make money consistently. I would make money one good one month, then lose everything the next month. On futures that I, I I started to make a process, you know, like really, okay, now I need to learn and make a process and become better in my process. So I started like having a routine, started reading. I remember I bought so many books of uh, Larry Williams. I was in the course of Oliver Vera, so the options, so Linda Rashki. And then I joined uh, Ken Kaloon of Day Trade University and Steve Nizen for about one year and a half, two years. So I was dedicating myself and I was training myself full time for, for futures. And I liked it. I liked it till uh, 2000, I think 2011, 2012, when I had um, a lot of anxiety. And that was a, a part of my, of my life, I think, is uh, because so many years of trading. And also the, what happens in your life that influences your, so it's not only the stress of trading, but also what happens in your life. A breakup, somebody dies in your family, all of this builds up. And that's the reason why right now when I mentor traders and I love to do that, uh, I always tell them you have to fix all your life before trading. You don't have to have like interference from anything else. It's hard to do it because everybody has, you know, taxes, bills, mortgage, uh, uh, breakups, marriage, kids, uh, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever problems. But when you have these problems and you bring them into trading, your trading won't be good. And I, I can tell you because I been to the emergency so many times between 2010 and 2014. And that's the reason why I have to take a break from trading. Or I thought that really I was going to, to have a stroke, you know. Wow. And uh, and I remember at that time I I worried out everything, started buying lands, real estate, uh, and this even before, but I completely stopped for I think three four years, and I and I had to really think about myself, about my future, and then I met my wife, which was the the best thing that ever happened to me, uh, besides God. So he was always something important in my life. And, um, and and that's it. I mean, that that was uh, the first 10 years, 12 years of trade in my life. The first part of my trade in my life. So organizing your, your life outside of trading, is it, you know, it got to the point you were trading so like for such a long period with anxiety. It started to catch up with you. And the problem is like, uh, it's like, you know, the, the water's boiling and it just can't take it anymore. So I know I, I had a similar experience where, uh, my first few years where I, I started to learn trading, my life was a disaster. And, um, you know, from reading and, and studying the successful traders, I realized, oh, okay, I need to organize my life, you know, and it's, it's yeah, it's key. Um, yeah, so like when new traders come to you, do, do you uh, put a focus on that? Like when you, when you do uh, mentor them? Yeah. yeah, David, one of the things, I mean, if you read all the big traders, they talk about psychology, but they don't really talk about the emotions. And I would say, what happens with all the emotions that you bring inside yourself? And I'm here to tell you that those emotions, if you cannot really have a stress relief valve or like, you know, something that you put out your stress, like a sport, like somebody you talk to, then your health really will suffer. And I'm here to tell you guys, uh, really, it was really, really frightening what happened to me really frightening i mean i i don't really i'm afraid of many things in my life uh i've been doing like mma for a long time and i'm getting punches all over and i was not afraid but that i was afraid i mean i was afraid 120 kilo man to be 
scared, you know, just like of how you feel, that sensation that's fighting. So who comes to me? I'm not only explaining, you know, about trading. This is the setup. This is where you have to trade. Uh, this is the stats of the market because I'm doing like algorithm trading right now. And this is how many times we'll fail. This is how many times we'll run. That's the easy part, you know? The hard part instead is trying to uh, build a trader at 360 degrees. And this means having a routine that you feel comfortable and uh, I would say consistent with from starting the day, uh, being gratitude, doing your exercise, doing meditation, do your sports, having a clean diet during the week, train. Uh, and then during the weekend, having you know, maybe a cheat meal, having fun with friends. So having really something planned. Uh, because when you suffer anxiety is only because you there is indecision. And when there's indecision, you simply can have like uh, stress. The second thing is to build a plan for the day. So knowing exactly what you're going to trade, how much you're going to risk. Uh, and then analyze your trading, which I think is the most important thing. This I want to talk about. When I started Small Caps 2016 and 17, the only person, and I was in five trading rooms and I still am in some trading room because you know some of these became my friends the only person that ever helped me in fixing these things because I was seeing his approach was smash the bid okay Scott oh, I he's had him on did you see it yeah he's amazing yeah, yeah. he's amazing because yeah. I was not profitable and I'm saying over here like I said so many times I was not profitable start something new nobody's profitable you know and uh even Lance was saying this to me, Lance Brinson. He was saying, Jay, when you, when you start, you have to practice with very, very small size. My first error, boom, putting so much size in small case and being killed. And then I started and I, and I met Smash. And I said, Smash, really? I tried this room, this room, this room. Nothing is helping me. Like, you know, I cannot find some consistency. And he said, track, do this, do this. He gave me, you know, not really the strategy, which I had to build myself, but it gave me all the inputs for me to become that trader and to improve like I never, did, never had been in my life, like not even when I was 19 and 20, because maybe now I'm more mature, I could develop a better process, I could be more focused, more patient, maybe all what I experienced in the past, losses, wins, up and downs, anxiety, stress, finding God in my way, all of this now creates my background. And, uh, and I believe that in order to form a trader, you need a little bit of all of this because only then you have that experience, that discipline, that patience to be complete. So thank you very much to Smash. <clears throat> awesome. And Jay, um, what about the algo trading? Like what, um, what got you into that? And how did you like decide to uh, go the algo route? Okay, the point is, I believe that God, along the way, like you and now are talking, you came in my way, I came in your way. I mean, God does everything with a plan. You just need to believe it. Sometimes you ask for one thing, he doesn't give you that thing, but he gives you another thing, another opportunity. And I found the right people at the right time. I'm a trader, and now I'm more than a trader, I'm a mentor. I don't trade that much anymore. I think I have much more to give as a mentor. And, uh, but I still love the part of trading. And I always thought about putting my ideas, my setups into a, a system that I don't have to do anything. Click a button, open the computer, it does everything by itself. So I started like uh, getting involved with uh, certain coders about uh, programming and about putting everything into a way that I don't have to do anything. The sharp ratio of some of these setups are crazy from 2 to 2.90. The win rate generally stays between 40 to 65, 70%. The return is in crazy. The drawdown average in the last 12 years is no more than 4% with a profit curve that each year goes up. No losing years. So the fact was for me to find a way to eliminate emotions, uh, to invest big capitals, 
and to go to, you know, to become an institution. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I believe for the next 20, 30 years, that will be my direction. Wow. Okay. So I know you trade a lot of different stuff. You tra uh, you've traded, said Forex in the past, big caps, the futures. I lost in Forex. <laughs> you lost in Forex. So, so going to that. Okay. So what, what is it about Forex? I always thought, okay, you're competing against banks and like uh, a lot of people like Jeff Soros or something. Is that, <laughs> is that why there's like l less edge with Forex or what was your opinion on it? Okay. You compete against central banks. Uh, it's a market where I believe if you're a retail trader with the wrong software, they're going to eat you. I'm not going to make the name because I already made before, but there are some software that really you will enter. And if you day trade, they will work against you. Don't ask me why they do like this. When you trade forex, you talk about pips. I'm still in some forums from 2006, 2007, 2008. I was in forex factory, all of this. I'm still like a member. And one thing I remember is that really, I was crazy good one month. In one month, something like all my setups didn't work at all and I lose everything. Always like this, never been, you know, profit curve uh, because not only a market where you have to be good, you have to be involved a lot in the news. And uh, maybe it was me that, you know, not everybody is good for everything. Okay. Yeah. So, I really didn't like Forex. I tried every system out there. I tried to program. I tried to do, uh, I would say, system with other traders. I studied a lot and nothing really worked for me. So the only way that I believe you can be consistent in Forex is one, or with algorithmic trading or with more swing trading rather than day trading. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's really what I experienced. Gotcha. I, I think it's interesting that, you know, the, because that's why I asked you, because, you know, you, you've traded everything pretty well successfully, even in crypto. I've seen you do like crypto videos in the past and, you know, you, you know, you were trading that for a while. Are you still trading crypto? I'm only hodler in crypto. In crypto. Uh, the guy that uh, maybe you can interview is Crypto Burr. We became friends. So when I have a question about crypto, I refer to him. Uh, yes, I have a good position of a good average on uh, Bitcoin. I use just my technical analysis and my system that when it was a 60, I remember I said on Twitter, let's not buy it because some children in the room said, oh, let's buy it. Let's buy it. No, I said, not buy it. It was uh, November of 2021. And uh, one week, two weeks after I was in the city over here and somebody, you know, because everybody knows over here, we're 30,000 people. So everybody knows the work that I've been doing since that time. And I'm also registered as a trader since that time. Uh, and said, yeah, how he did it? Well, I said, why? I was just like waking up. Uh, because now it's 42, 43K, like in two days or one day, I remember went down like 18K. And I said, well, for me, it was too extended. I never buy far from, you know, these J-Lines bands or far from like a main demand support. And then when it was 40, I said, I'm not ready yet. Can crack. And I started buying 19. My only regret is that at 19, now that the price is at 30s, I didn't buy that much. <laughs> so I'm honestly saying that I could have bought 10 times more. I only got in with one tenth of the size. And that's a uh, main mistake. So I'm waiting for more dips. But for me, the price in the next six, eight months can go to the 40. Gotcha. And um, are you looking at algos for all types of markets or just specific markets for now? We said you were thinking of algos for the next 30 years. So yeah. what's now, are, what kind of uh, just for all markets? For now, uh, we are just today around 40 algorithms made only for futures. So only for a future market. Uh, we'll make also for the stocks. And uh, that will be the next goal. By the end of the year, I believe we're going to have 100 algorithms. Uh, so, as you know, you cannot trade the market with one algorithm. There's a bullish, bearish, sideways action. Uh, there's a market for, let's say, um, for a consolidation, a market for trending, a market for reversal, a market for like a day trade swing. So different types, different products, crude oil, um, gold, uh, euro, yen, uh, S&P, all of this. So you need several algos. Uh, the next one, I believe, we're going to be an algo on Tesla. Because an algo on Tesla. Main yeah. products. I love it. So 
Oh uh, yeah. So, so 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 to start to wrap it up. So before the the podcast started, you mentioned some trades that you traded today. You also traded Tesla, I think, right? Yeah, personally, I'm not traded Tesla because I said I'm not trading that anymore. But I'm mentoring. I'm alerting the trades. I'm explaining the trades to traders. We got some Tesla swing from the two forties and at 274 that we alerted last Thursday. Uh, right now, we're still looking for swing target 300, and we had the other day 298, so for a few points, we didn't get there, and then 315. Uh, for intraday this morning, was a it was a nice reversal, so it came bearish, market faded, futures faded. Uh, future day really love to push into a key level of supply, gave a full breakout, and then right away, Fail the full breakout and fail all the way down. So bull trap. Uh, I seen that instead you're doing some very good trades in the small cap land. I really like it. So I, I like the, the stock that you trade. You have a lot of, I would say, uh, knowledge into scalping right now, Claire. Yeah, um, just small caps. I just try to have different strategies for different market environments. So right now it's kind of slow. So like, yeah, I will short some... Uh, scalpy strategies you know just to you know keep warmed up while i wait for some you know like a bigger setup to have uh, an a setup to come up you know so i consider it like practice you know i i think i or i heard um another podcast lance bernstein i think mentioned it and also alex Temiz from um when they some a couple of podcasts of um how they stay warmed up by like trading you know throughout the market you know like throughout the year mm -hmm. it's to keep themselves ready like for when a real like a first red day big first red day happens or one of those like big trades of the year you know you have to stay warmed up you can't just like uh go on vacation for three months and then come back and then expect to hit the big exactly. trade when it's when it's there so um exactly. yeah so like i i see those scalp strategies like that i have like like that you know that's like good uh, small caps are uh, very good to trade now we have so many months brokers so many more brokers where you can short uh, when I started like the 16, 17 in, in Smash, uh, there were a few brokers really giving uh, hard to borrow stocks. Now every, everybody's giving hard to borrow stocks. That's right. That's right. Uh, people keep forgetting about that. It was a lot harder to, to do that back then. Even just um, the the data and the phone, things were so much different. And then you also traded back in the early days, like 2000, the early 2000s, you had like a big computer, right? Like with yeah. dial-up. it. <laughs> My my thing is I had this computer with this uh, back like this. I was under the stairs with my parents, I had no car. I couldn't afford an apartment. I was 19 and 20. I was broke. The only money that I had, I used to invest in proteins. <laughs> oh, in yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was really nothing. And I remember even the, uh, the platform we used to have was real tick one, two, and three. Uh, there was uh, really... None of all this charting that I have right now, so totally different. And it was really another world, another world. Few chat rooms. Uh, I had no data. Uh, in Italy, I couldn't have access to filings, so I never knew about the company, how it was. So we were really like back in the days. Uh, I was talking with traders who started like, I think, uh, 94, 95. They were calling with the phone, the Borsini in Italy, you know? They were calling with the phone, the broker, to say what to buy and to sell. Imagine doing it right now on yeah. a small cap, how it works. You have to call the broker, buy me. By the time you say buy me, you have to tell them to call him back. Oh, please, can you sell it? So this is a lot of opportunity for people, you know, like they don't understand. This is a so much opportunity. You be sell, like have all this opportunity now to learn yes. the Internet. You can talk to mentors in the Internet. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, multiple. You have a broker. I have multiple brokers that are didn't exist, uh, even in 2016, 17. You yeah. know, and so like all this is new. So the opportunity is there. It's like a new industry. You know, yes, there's so much if you want to become a good trader. You know, there's uh, so much. When uh, when I started, really there was nothing. I have still my newspaper. I have my course that I did. And if now I think what I studied at the time, I mean, I was studying Gann and Elliot. If now you tell me, Jay, are you still using that? Not at all. I was studying books about scalping. If you see those books and you start looking right now at the tape on L2 uh, that you have with, let's say, with the broker, it's totally different. Uh, besides, you talking about market being different from a uh, U.S. market, but it was totally different, totally another era, totally another world.
Yeah, well, I'm I'm so glad that the market is the way it is, like it's available now because um it's changed my life. You know, I was able to switch careers and start fresh because like now, you know, it's all performance based on you. You can go on the internet and find mentors like I did. See, like you, you know, you find you on the internet. I found you on the internet. We still haven't met, <laughs> so um, you're invited yeah. over here. Yeah, <laughs> in Italy. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I want to go to Europe um this year, hopefully. So we'll see. So, Jay, um, any other last thoughts before we wrap it up? Last thought, traders, is really this. Uh, one, follow everything that David is putting out because all those traders will give us something very important to learn from. The second thing is start small. If I regret one thing in my life was to often put in too much money too soon. Instead, really start even with two shares, three shares. If you're trading futures, start with one or two micro contracts like, you know, mess or m and q And the third thing is really, really important. Have a broker that is reliable and have a broker that really has an amazing customer care. Many times uh, when I had problems in cover warrants, twice SIM, twice SIM of Banco Commercial Italiana, I had problems with uh, with really the, the firms. And I used to call them my bank because these firms wouldn't come out with the right price or would even update the prices. So the bank was like the intermediary for me to work with, you know, uh, the firms in order to make them come out with the price. So that's very important. Have also a relationship with your broker. Talk to him. They have to know yourself. Even if you have a small account, even if you have 5K, introduce yourself to the broker. Explain who you are. Try to send a letter maybe to the CEO or to the main manager over there. It's very important to create this kind of, I would say, this work together. And I believe it's going to pay off. You can give information about, you know, who's the best, I would say, chat room, who's the best, like, uh, maybe um, meeting to go to, uh, what to study. Do it. And I think it, it will benefit you. Very good advice. There you go from a, from a veteran trader right there. A solid advice. Um, yeah, have a good relationship with your brokers for sure. Um, absolutely. So, Jay, thanks for coming on the podcast, and we'll keep in touch soon. Thank you very much, David. Have a good one. All right, thank bye. you.